You're listening to the Battle Science Podcast, a Pokemon Ge- a Pokemon Go PvP podcast where we talk about Go Battle League, Silph Arena, and Pokemon Go as a whole. I am one of your hosts, Steven, aka A Boy in the Woods. Joining me as always is Jesse, aka Rocket Admin J. Coming in, I'm coming in with a little too much energy. Let me just tone it down a little. You didn't mute me again, did you? Uh, no, I unmuted you. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, it is August 27th, 2020. For those of you that have not looked at a calendar and are unsure as to what time period you are in, we are still in 2020, but we're getting to the end. Um, for those of you who are listening live, or if you're listening later, uh, as a podcast, you might be wondering why we're running a little, or we're 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 recording a little late. That's because we wanted to bring the uh, mega news to you, um, rather than doing our show on time on like Tuesday, uh, and then waiting two weeks for us to discuss uh, this mega news. Um, we'll get into that, uh, but first, uh, Jesse, you doing all right? How you doing? Yeah, tired. How's uh how's how's the Pokemon Go's been? Well, I was incredibly disappointed with the Unova event, but that's just how RNG works, right everyone? Let's get some claps in the chat for three hundred and eighty four encounters of Rog and Rolla and no shiny. Boof. <laughs> this year has been eighty four years. Yeah, I I love uh, I the time is a flat circle and whatever. Absolutely. So somebody asked me today was like, "How was your birthday?" And I was like, "I can't remember last week. Give me a minute." <laughs> <laughs> um, and my birthday was like two two months ago. So like, it was not that long ago. But my brain can't function on time. What is time? What is time? Dialga, tell me, please, please. Please, Dialga, Dialga, tell me. Please say Dialga, this. just. <laughs> I was like, uh, thanks, thanks, Dialga. Um, I don't know what I expected there. <laughs> uh, we've got a bunch of news to cover, so let's. Uh, after uh, that, somewhat interesting intro. Let's uh, let's jump into some news stuff. Um, that is, uh, the wrong page for the right reasons. Here we go. Uh, first up, we're going to hit a couple of quickie stuff in our news roundup. Uh, community note, Pokemon can now be found in more places around the world. Um, this is a PokemonGoLive.com um, blog post basically saying uh, they changed the spawn points. Um, so uh, a while ago, I'm sure people, uh, players of, of Pokemon Go uh, from... Uh, c- consistent hey, players me. yeah consistent players uh of pokemon go uh from the past might remember a time when spawns changed uh there was no warning there was no explanation uh nobody liked it from what i could tell um and that was about it uh everyone uh, some new event came up and we all continued playing pokemon go um <laughs> well it, it it happened again they changed the spawn points but they actually told us about it um Never forget Trap Hinge Community Day. Uh, I don't know where that's coming. Was that right after that spawn point change? I don't remember. Um, that's roughly about the time. So they changed spawn points. Um, I know for me personally, I went from about two spawn points in my house to about three to four, which is cool. Um, I don't know so, what the plus minus of everyone else's spawn points at in their general uh, location is. I actually haven't I even gone through town to see what uh, our local town spawns have looked like. I haven't either. I've been working. But I think more or less the thing that people can take away from this is they're starting to take places where, like they did last year where things spawn in a cluster. So you have your hot spots that you like to go to. They're spreading them out. And by spreading them out, they're also alleviating people from sitting and just congregating in one spot. I think that's really what they're trying to do is they want people to like in the article, they mentioned that places that had high foot traffic, but low Pokemon spawns, it might now have changed. 
Like I'm, te- I really want to go out to the woods out behind our house here, up at the waterfall, and see if there are more spawns on that trail now because of this rework. Mm-hmm. But I think that's kind of what they're incentivizing is they're taking these places that normally didn't have a lot of foot traffic, and maybe now go check out those places and see if it's better. I think we I've seen a big increase in rural spawns, that's for sure. Like I was driving around one of the more recently developed uh side the side view housing area over uh-huh. there behind side view pool. And there are a lot more spawns literally throughout the cul-de-sacs now. Hmm. Granted, I'm not gonna go there and play because I don't live there, right. even though it's public property, but you know. I don't want to be that creepy 30 something year old looking around, walking and playing on my phone where people live. If I had a friend that lived there, that'd be something different. But if you know, it's go out and explore, but be respectful for where you go out and explore to see these new spawn points. Right. I would check, check your normal routes and see what, uh, see what's changed. Um, Mm -hmm. I would be very interested. Um, I want to say, usually the Tuesday spotlight hours have interesting, uh, showcase usually, most of what um most of what the spawn points are um mm-hmm. i think probably next tuesday i should go out and see what the general spawn points are and see what mm. um what's changed what's changed yeah if anything uh interesting has swapped out here so um don't mind me i'm just trying to do a rocket battle here while recording which is going <laughs> about as good as you would expect um Nicer. It's an electric. I was hoping it would be a Mareep, but it is a Magnemite. So, you know, whatever. Uh, you win some, you lose some. Um, yeah, I, I definitely appreciate them actually communicating this time uh, and saying, uh, yes, this is a change that is uh, happening. Um, and our goal is to bring spawn points, more spawn points to locations that, um, you know, don't normally have a whole or haven't in the past had a whole lot of spawns um and again this could also be helping with covid because i know some people have been confined to their house yeah and like what you've been saying where you've only had one to two you now have at least three to four yeah definitely um i don't know the exact name of the video but uh um trainer tips nick nick's um video when he went to uh oh goodness where did he go to the redwood forest Uh uh-uh no 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 the um, he didn't go to did he go south america or did he go to africa where did he go uh i don't think he's been to africa where did he go god now we're gonna south america (laughs) uh let me where in the world is trainer tips yeah where in the world is trainer tips nick i don't know uh let me just quickly do a search to see where so, he's gone to quickly answer uh jiggly dad we play often enough in our small town that we live here in that we can kind of pinpoint where spawns frequently pop up like you think supermarkets grocery outlets malls any place with high foot traffic we have because we live in washington we have numerous starbucks <laughs> The joke is there's a Starbucks across the street from a Starbucks. More or less. But we are very familiar with where our spawn points are in town. So we can look at them and see. Spotlight was a good example. I think what was the one that we went to the senior center and we hung out there for? I forget what it was. But we like dropped lures and everything. So we had increased our chances. Do you remember which one it was? For spotlight hour? There was a spotlight hour where we were like, oh, I need to go there because we wanted to increase the opportunity to find it shiny. Uh, was this recently? I think so. Either way, we were familiar with the spawn points. And what was the other one that we recently had? Was it Mareep? Was there a Mareep spotlight there hour? There was not a Mareep spotlight hour. I would have freaked <laughs> out if there was a Mareep spotlight hour. I do not believe there was a Mareep spotlight hour. There was one where we drove around and we're like, wow, that's much different than what it used to be. Why do I, I, don't I it wasn't Pidgey. No, I, no. I want to say there was a very early on because I remember it being wet and rainy and we were actually able to be in a car together and drive around yeah. Um, yeah. way back in the day. It might have been around Trappage Community Day um, to be able to see all of the uh, the spawn points. 
Um, Julie Dad makes a good point. I'd have to go back and look at both. Uh, they say mm. that they don't think there's ever been a community that also has a spotlight hour. Huh. Uh, JMR went from 8 to 12 spawns at my house. It's been nice. Now I just need more Pokeballs. Yeah. Same. Yeah, I got to I gotta make a run through town with my <laughs> Pokeball Plus on to just uh, gather up items. Gifts. Oh, Open man. gifts. Yeah, I got to do that. Um, so I found the video. Uh, trainer tips, It was it's Morocco. So we went to Morocco. The initial video is called Pokemon Go is Still Not Fair. Uh, this is from May 13th, 2018. So uh, who knows? I, I I would be interested to see uh, if there's any community on Reddit or on Twitter um, from any of these regions uh, to give any feedback uh, as to this spawn point change um, to see if we've gotten any... Um, <laughs> see if those any uh, regions have gotten any better. So, um, all right. Now I'm going to look up the spotlight hours while you roll on to the next topic. Okay. Let's see. We've got the September calendar uh, for There's audio. Quite a bit. Yeah, for audio <laughs> listeners, we are looking at. Um, rem- help me out with the name of it. Is it just Legends? Or is Legends it Pogo Legends? Well, yeah. Um. So G2G Media and Legends. Um, this is their English calendar. They have an, a English calendar, a Spanish calendar, and they have a third language that I don't know off the top of my head. Um, but they have their, all of their graphics and stuff in multiple languages, mm-hmm. which is awesome. I think I found it. Which one? So February 4th was Onyx. Was it Onyx? Bluegird? I think that was the one I wanted to find really badly. That was the one we were in Issaquah for. I remember was being it? in Issaquah okay. for that. Yeah. But it, yeah, yeah Jiggly Dad, I think you're right. I'm looking here at the list, and all of these nominations that have been the uh, Spotlight Hour, uh-huh. none of these, well, except <sighs> Evie. Except for Evie, which is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Look at so that. There's, there's Evie. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, September content update. Um, September's research breakthrough is going to be a Lowland Raichu. Uh, I'm okay with that. I am also okay with that. That's one that I can't do solo as far as raids and getting other people to do that kind of raid is nigh impossible. Um, and I don't have the shiny for it and I don't mind, excuse me, I don't mind getting a couple more of those. Um, so that's cool. Um, Heatran from August 21st through September 10th. Goodness gracious, I still have more spawns. Um, catching a ball picks. Um, one of the... Uh other pogos are out there i don't remember which one it was they threw out the comment uh heatran was a blessing in disguise for our raid passes oh um and then what was it uh ken lured up was making a comment like yesterday of like or no today of like oh look um megas are in raids uh we'll get to that in a minute (laughs) um you had like you had like half a week of like heatran where Oh, cool. We don't have to spend money on uh, more passes or remote passes. I'm going to find that because that picture is funny. Now we have Mega Raid, so, which again, we'll get to here shortly. Um, September 10th through 18th for a single week, we'll have Cresselia. Um, that will have a single raid hour on the 16th. Uh, RT Kuno is going to be around from September 18th through September 25th. Sorry, I think I'm hearing something weird. Not sure what. Oh, it's somebody, somebody down the road using some sort of power drill. Um, Articuno from September 18th through the 25th. That also has a raid uh, hour on the 23rd. Uh, Zapdos around from the 25th through the 2nd. That has a raid hour on the 30th. Um, so some interesting raid bosses. A lot of stuff that would be Cresselia, Articuno, Zapdos to a lesser extent. Um, but having some staying power within the different levels of uh, Go Battle League. Um, although Cresselia's, Cresselia's still better in the higher leagues, and that's where it's going to come out to through the raids. Yeah. Um, the research Ever since rewards, it got Grass Knot, it's just been relevant. Yeah, the <laughs> research rewards ones are the ones you're looking for for a Great League Cresselia. And I think even within there, it's like a super small percentage. I know we've talked mm-hmm. about it in the past. Those margins for a sub great league legendary within trades are like disgustingly small. Yeah. On to Pokemon Spotlight Hours from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. local times on Tuesdays. 
uh, Eevee on September 1st with the bonus of double XP for catching. Uh, September 8th, Houndour uh, with double candy for catching. That's a interesting combo of something that's not uncommon. Interestingly with enough, double... well, Houndour might be one of the ones that gets Omega next, too. Because there that's is true. Mega Houndoom. That's right. Should I be surprised that Raichu doesn't get Omega and none of the Evolutions get Megas? I mean, the Evolutions are, have always been a mid-game mid, mid game Pokemon. Mm. Hmm. Um, tend to cool. Uh, on Still September... looking for my shiny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, September 15th with double candy for transferring. Uh, September 22nd, Sparrow with double XP for evolving. Where's the shiny? Uh, maybe we'll get it. I don't know. Maybe we'll get it then. The Kanti, Kanto Eric says the Kanto evolutions do have Megas, legendary beasts, but you can't spend candy to evolve those. So <laughs> they're making I, a joke about Entei, Raikou, and Suicune. No, I mean I get it. <laughs> I, I that understands. But no matter like how many, uh, how much candy I I have and want to use to evolve them, they won't. So. Um, but I, the, the lore is interesting on that though. So, uh, September 29th, Skitty with a bonus of double Stardust for catching. Um, so fun fact about Skitty and one that I've always been looking for is a rank one Skitty for PVP great league is also a perfect, right? Cause it comes out sub sub 1500 mm -hmm. and it's got an interesting move set too. So look out yep. for that one. Um, all right. Upcoming events, September 20th. Anyone uh, surprised? Number one boy. Pokemon Go Community Day. Porygon Z will learn Tri Attack. We have no idea what the stats are. Uh, Porygon will be around Shiny as well. Um, uh, actually, that's not a bad point, J. Mar. If September 22nd is going to be Sparrow, um, I wonder if that week we're not going to get Flying Event. Because both Articu Articuno starts on the 18th, Zapdos goes until Octo uh, October 2nd. Um, when does, when does season three of GBL end? Does someone have any, can somebody look, can up look, the, it up. look up that date for me? Cause the flying event, we don't have any more information still. We should have had information at this point, um, because it should have been happening within season two of GBL or season, season three with three the GBL. Is... Wait, what? Do you not have it? Season four will begin Monday, September fourteenth. That is, that is before both Articuno and Zapdos come in, and Sparrow. So there is a chance that the flying event might have been pushed back to season four. <laughs> but they won't tell us. Uh, we don't have any information <laughs> on that. We don't have confirmation. That's just some speculation. Um, because I mean, since we're in, uh, we're in Master League now, and we have had no information. Unless it comes out in the one week at the very end. Um, I mean, there's still a chance they could when they open it up for all three leagues. Yeah. Yeah. In that one in that one week, we might see it. I don't know. I don't know. I'd be. Yeah. Because hmm. that's in what? A week and a half? Mm -hmm. No, we just started Master like. Last Friday. Last Monday. Monday. So. Yeah. About a week. Week and a half. So it may be. I don't know. Eh, I don't know. We could wing it. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh. Um, boy, boy, but I tell the you one what. I'm excited for, and I'm pretty sure every PvP content creator will be on Twitch for September 24th. Go battle night from 6 p.m. to 11:59 p.m. Wow, that's late. Uh, you will receive twice the Stardust for winning battles and more. You'll also be able to complete 20 sets, a total of up to 100 battles. Um, yeah, I imagine just about everyone will be on Twitch streaming as many battles as possible. Um, King put out a tweet saying that he wants to do, what, 300 unique Pokemon within those battles? Um, because he recently did, like, 100 unique battles or uh, uh, however you... Never using a, uh, a Pokemon twice within GBL across, I think, a full day's amounts of sets or something. So, um, 
uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Cause I bet you, like I said, everyone's going to be just streaming. So yeah, it'd be fun to do a collab with a bunch of people, but I think that's something people need to start planning now if they're going to do it. And I'm sure ghost stadium is already doing something. Yeah. I, I'd love to see some um, Go Battle Night, like uh, you or I battling or something, and get a couple people from the community to do shoutcasting or something. So, mm-hmm. um, the unfortunate thing is it's so long that the overlap watch with us, other watch us terrible perform. Yeah, the unfortunate <laughs> thing is because it's so long, the overlap with every other um, t- uh, time zone within the U.S. is yeah. going to be pretty drastic. So, why um, does his Venusaur have pedal blizzard? What is he doing? I don't know. <laughs> um, just about anybody that wants to be participating in it would already be battling. They'd already True. be busy, so they'd have to basically. I mean, I to be honest, I probably won't do this just because I'm not that crazy. Although it's twice Stardust, I don't know. Um, I don't know. You got to imagine that also a bunch of the content creators will be on, so there'll be a fun chance to battle against other people. Yeah, I mean, with if you're within those ranks, even then everybody's going to be playing. Yeah. Well, anybody that cares for Stardust. Yeah. Hey, Jiggly <laughs> Dad. Who- uh, how late of an interview are you looking for? I'll just put that out there. Um, Victini special research at the end of September. Did they? I don't think they gave a date there. Um, if you accessed the exclusive Pokemon Go Fest 2020, completing this new special research will earn you Victini candy. So if you already have, I believe, a garbage Victini like I do, you'll just get more candy. Um, because, <laughs> yeah, more candy for your garbage. Yeah. Um, and then on September 30th, uh, Jesse and James say goodbye. Um, I, blasting off again. I guess they were a, uh, what's it called? Um, some sort of crossover for the movie release, even though the movie came out you mean beforehand? The one that was on Netflix? Yeah, I think so. By the way, good remake. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, we watched it together before the pandemic stuff. Um, yep. which feels like forever ago. Um, um, so, I mean, I, it, I feel like the time frame as far as when the movie came out and then Jesse and James came into the game was a little bit spaced out. Um, but yeah. I guess that was sort of an interesting crossover and they'll be leaving for a while. Um, if not permanently, it's an interesting, uh, concept and I would be interested to see more, different NPCs and stuff come into the game. Um, I wasn't a huge fan that they're like shaders. Their, their models were still <laughs> reasonably within Pokemon go, but the fact that all of their textures were like shinier than literally everything else, like they glistened and it was kind of <laughs> weird. Um, but I, from what I understand, also... they, they literally ported the assets from like the movie or something yeah. um, to use them. So, you know, but this is also a good stepping stone, just <laughs> stepping stone, to show us they can in- incorporate other NPCs. Yep. Which would be more, more, int- just uh, some of that stuff would be very interesting to see. It's always, I think, refreshing content. Um, plus the fact that the um, coughing and Ekans could both be shiny was mm-hmm. uh, a nice change of pace. So, um, new NPC each month. Um, Personally, I'd like to see some of the other teams come in eventually. That would be cool. Yeah, I'd love to see some of the um, Team Aqua, Team Mag- Magma Aqua. stuff. I wonder, actually, now that we mentioned that, with Megas and with uh, Kyogre and Groudon having primal forms, um, if we wouldn't <laughs> see some sort of interesting crossover between Rocket and Magma, or um, Magma and Aqua um, at some Maxi point. Maxi tries to give <laughs> Groudon the blue orb. <laughs> yeah, I, I would be what interested to see if they, if they don't show up for, like, if there's a Aqua and Magma um take over for a weekend or something and at the end it's um mega energy or whatever for uh, Kyogre and Groudon yeah again we'll get into some more uh mega stuff here momentarily um all right so after the, I, I, because we do episodes every two weeks um the weekend after we came out with the previous episode um Go Stadium uh along with a number of other um content creators um, released an open letter to Niantic uh, and Pokemon Go and the battlers as a community. Um, it's been a while since I've read this. It's n- not super long. I'm going to try. 
Um, having not read it recently, to condense this as uh, fast and as solid as I can here. Um, we would like to begin by recognizing... Uh, here, I'm going to quote. To Niantic. We would like to begin by recognizing the strides made and thanking those who work extremely hard in the game, and specifically the player versus player battle feature. Uh, you heard feedback with previous versions of the switching mechanic and made changes. Exploit in the game uh, and leaderboard were met with an immediate response and takedown of Go Battle League until fixed. As an example, the ability to switch Pokemon during a charge move tie was most recently fixed, which was greatly, which we greatly appreciated. We want it. Uh, we want it clear that we truly appreciate the continued support of the feature, both in game and on social media through official channels and personal accounts. We see you sharing our excitement for our tournaments and celebrating our achievements, and we want to continue cel to celebrate yours. So allow us to formally thank you for the feature and for the work that you've put into up to this point. Following the timeline of updates and fixes, it would appear that some glitches are connected to the fi fixing of a previous one. For instance, a fix was re recently implemented to stop switching during a charge move tie, but with that update, switching in general has been much more difficult examples later. As a group, that includes developers of uh, community tools. We understand uh, as a group of as a group that includes developers of community tools, we understand that issues happen and an update at times has unintended consequences. But seeing how long uh, they take, but seeing how long they take to be officially acknowledged or resolved is disheartening. The goal of this message is to list the most important issues currently uh, inhibiting competitive gameplay. Needless to say, this message is constructive in nature, and we do not condone toxic behavior of any form directed directed towards the developers of our beloved game. Um, and so here is listed a handful of GBL technical issues. Um, Which, if you PvP, you should be very aware of these. Um, desync and delay after charge moves. Um uh, this involve it has a description, note, status. I'm going to, and then some examples. Um, I'm going to miss past this. If you guys want to check this out, stadiumgaming.gg slash post slash an open letter to Niantic, the PvP community. Uh, those are all spaced with dashes um, because in a website header, you can't have spaces um, or in a uh, website link. Uh, the next issue, charge moves not firing when button is pressed. Um, charge move buttons disappear and players unable to perform actions. Uh, these are all issues here. Wins are unrecorded in journal and count against games played. Um, that's an interesting issue that, uh, has occurred for a while, I believe. Um, uh, and then a handful of other issues. Um... They have several paragraphs here. I'm just going to read these because these are more broad. Um, so after all of the um, examples of bugs that Ghost Stadium lists, um, this is what uh, Ghost Stadium has in their open letter. To Niantic continued. We understand that those who participate in and enjoy trainer battles make up the minority of the player base and that resources are normally allocated to features that are relevant to a wide range of players. Those are us... Those of us who have signed this letter, as well as many others, love the Trainer Battles feature and would love to see its popularity continue to grow on Twitch, YouTube, and on other platforms if these issues are acknowledged and resolved faster. If finding and replicating a glitch on video is needed, we are all more than happy to send links to recorded matches or clips to help identify and confirm issues more quickly in the future. In the past, we've seen top players create strategies around presumably unintended game mechanics, but the dis... Uh, dis Ooh, I'm going to try this one. Disenfranchisement. Disenfranchisement. I still butchered it. Uh, thanks for the help, Jesse. <laughs> I can't get that one. Uh, they have felt over the past five months has pushed them away. Not only that, the prevailing issues preventing the next batch of amazing battlers to rise to the ranks and leaderboards and discourages them to participate in Go Battle League and Trainer Battles. Um... We want to feature. Uh, we want the feature to be stable, and the blog posts on help shift where the quote contract of trust end quote was outlined seem to be a step in the right direction. This blog post or parentheses this blog post seems to have been removed as it cannot be accessed from the tweet it was linked in end quote. Uh, we enjoy the developer insights and updates when given, and that dialogue, even if they can't be sustained, has helped the community better understand the perspective of the developer and why there might be delays. Server lag is uh, inevitable, and there will always be 
small issues in every online game. The issues we currently have in the game are prohibitive to competitive play, but we understand that they can be fixed. Uh, as said already, we are thankful for the support of the Trainer Battles feature and the amazing work made in previous updates. While we understand that fixing these issues can be resource intens intensive, we believe that addressing the current major issues will restore enthusiasm around one of the best features within the game. Battling with the Pokemon, uh, battling with Pokemon we've collected and investing uh, in, or inv and invested in with trainers and friends from around the world. Um, a much shorter paragraph here to the hashtag battlers community hey as, that's you that's that's you and me and hopefully everyone listening um as battlers we have experienced these issues that can be frustrating especially during competitive play as a community it is our responsibility to focus on a positive approach and being constructive in nature we hope this letter captures some of the frustrations we have had over the past few months and invites you to join us in helping be part of the solution when on social media or even talking to technical support through private means, always be mindful that there is a human or always be mindful there is a human being on the other side of that screen. In conclusion, we have put this letter together to both Niantic and the community from deep admiration for both the game and our fellow battlers. We believe that trainer battles uh, and the way that we criticize any associated issues both can both be improved and would greatly appreciate to have continued dialogue as much as possible when new issues arise. We hope that through this, we can continue to grow the community around the trainer battles feature together and enjoy battling with Pokemon and trainers we've met on our journey. Um, so this is respectfully signed and GG's. Um, I'm not going to go a through this entire, <laughs> a whole lot of people. Uh, so rambling rabbit, Caleb Pang, Kakuna Matata, Tho technical, uh, Miss Mystic, um, Ken of Lured Up, uh, J.R.E. Seawolf, uh, The Nut, uh, Valorash, Twastel, a ton of people. Uh, AJ, um, oh, what's his Twitter handle? Um, AJ of um, Ghost Stadium. Um, J. Devin, Mathematician. Squawk, that's right. Um, Toshi. Um, plenty of people. Um. So, Niantic replied. Yes, Niantic replied. I do. Do you have any comments on this open letter, <laughs> Eric? <laughs> AJ. Uh, AJ is a butt fame. Yes, yes. Yes. That is the. That is the AJ. <laughs> yes. I guess he is famous for. I don't know. Being called a butt or something. Um. It sounds like. Um. Oh, uh... so if you don't mind, I'm going to quickly skim over how they responded, how Niantic responded. Go for it. Mm -hmm. So they are aware of the bugs. They are increasing quality assurance to make sure things work smoothly. They're adding more testers and more automated testing. They are also adding a known issue section for Go Battle League and PvP in general. And they are going to keep working to make it better. They obviously notice with this approach that Ghost Stadium and others have, you know, gone towards them. It's more than just an upset tweet or a list of complaints of here's what you can do to fix it. They realize that when they're treated as people, that communication and progress will happen. But it takes everyone's, I guess, hand in the pot or more or less working together to make the community better. I mean, back when we did the 24 hour stream with go stadium hashtag build the community. That's really what it is. Understand that these are people trying their best with the tools they are allowed to use to make the game better. And not everybody plays on the same. I mean, it's not like the switch where everybody plays Pokemon sword and shield on the same console. Right. So if there's a problem, they can see it across one thing. Right, it's that's the multiple devices, multiple OSs, multiple networks. It's that's, not something they could just quickly hot fix and say, "Oh, here's the problem." That's the awkward thing with uh, mobile development, um, and something that um, I don't really know where I was going with that. Um, I don't know further where I was going with that. Uh, mobile development is incredibly complicated because of there are so many devices and networks and uh, infrastructures and all of that stuff. Um, 
So uh, I th- think I do agree with Jiggly Dad. It was a very positive response, yes. but vague. But in the same vein, as a company that works with the Pokemon company, they're only allowed to say so much. Yeah, I I, am, I would be. We'll never get the the a response for it, but I would be curious to see how much like even these blog posts need to get approved by the Pokemon company. Um, what how much of a hand you know uh, TPC and uh, Nintendo? Although Nintendo doesn't own it. No. So, um, although I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo owned a stake in the T- the Pokemon Company, but um, I don't think they own a controlling stake in it. Um, but this is definitely a right step in the right direction. I uh, just like with the the blog post about the spawns changed. The communication is something that we have been asking for for a very long time, and this is that communication as vague as it is it's yes still this is progress. the communication yeah um i'm sure that I, they so it took them how long did it take them to put this response out this was Two on weeks. the 16th 10 days this came out yesterday so um i'm sure that within themselves as well they are there's there's probably some introspection going on as well um as far as okay here's some things we can do immediately um improving the qa testing um and then automated testing um and then the known issues page making a known issues page specifically for um the battling feature i'm sure there's also some introspection within that is okay what else can we do we can do these things very easily. These things can already be worked on as far as how we improve the communication and the uh, fixing of bugs and improvement of the game. Um, but I'm sure there is some internal discussion as to, okay, what what else can we do? What else is within our power to, to help this? Um, it's certainly not every day that a, a community of the game comes together like what uh, this open letter is like. It's certainly not every day that a game, a games community comes together like this and puts out a a open letter like this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure most game developers never expect this. Um, this is honestly something that uh, it kind of caught me by surprise a little bit as well. The releasing of this it makes sense, but it's something. It's it's definitely something that. Um, you know, uh, unless you're, you know, super, I, I would not have thought to do this. Um, I appreciate that they thought to do this and they put this out and they put it out in a, um, such a succinct and positive way. Um, I guess is a a way to, a way to say, um, to phrase it, um, in, in a constructive way. They put it in a very constructive way. Um, I was going to say formal. (laughs) <laughs> and formal formal yeah the, they 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 did it and they did it right um and i'm sure niantic was not expecting this so um props to niantic for actually responding and working on something um and hopefully they'll continue working on some back end stuff to better improve um mm-hmm. beyond just what they've stated here so uh i think that's it on that uh, are you ready to hit the mega news jesse Yes. All right. Uh, August 27th. So earlier today, with mega raids come mega changes to raid battles. Um, This is from PokemonGoLive.com, one of their blog posts. Uh, Trainers, with the introduction of mega raids, we'll get to that in another minute, Uh, we have made the following updates to raids. Changes to raid tiers. Raid tiers have been updated to only include one-star raids, three-star raids, and five-star raids. Even numbers don't exist. (laughs) <laughs> and mega raids sorry i forgot that one one star raids and three star raids now include a greater variety of pokemon the difficulty of one star and three star raids will remain the same as before but the rewards have been increased to what two star and four star raids awarded respectively um i guess that means i can solo alolan raichu now or no because alolan raichu is a three star right mm-hmm. um so it probably stays a three star it stays a three star oh gosh darn it <laughs> um, oh well. 
Uh, changes to raid bonuses. In addition to the raid tier changes, a speed bonus is replacing the team contribution bonus for all raids moving forward. Okay, I did not know this. This is interesting. Uh, the faster you defeat the raid boss, the more rewards everyone participating in the raid will receive. The gym defender bonus is staying, so teams will still have something to compete for before uh, compete for before the raid begins. Um, there's a lot of fours there. Um, in one star, three star, and five star raids, the speed bonus will reward you additional premier balls. In mega raids, the speed bonus will reward you additional mega energy. Again, another thing we'll get to here shortly. Uh, grab a remote raid pass or two from the shop, kick off a raid battle, and try out these changes for yourselves. Let's go. Um, and then, as always, a little paragraph here at the end. Please be aware of your surroundings and follow, follow guidelines of local health authorities when playing Pokemon Go. Upcoming events are subject to change. Be sure to follow us on social media, opt into receiving push notifications, and subscribe to our emails to stay updated. For latest on in-game events and future updates, be sure to check this Help Center article, The Pokemon Go uh, Team. I just sent you a link to the current raid pools, if you want to look at that. Uh, I will pop that up here. Uh, a couple of gaming tweeted 13 hours ago. Current raid bosses in Tier 1, Sandshrew, Kingler, Marowak, Gligar, Gl- Gl- yeah. Whalmer, Gligar, uh, Gligar. <laughs> uh, uh, Prinplup, Shinx, Oshawott, Timber in Tier 3, because Tier 2s don't exist, uh, A-Raichu, Machamp, Onyx, Awok, uh, Rhydon, Vaporeon, Donphan, and Claydol, and then in Tier 5s, because Tier 4s don't exist, Heatran. Um... I ran through that pretty quick, but yes. Nothing I'm surprised about there, I guess. So, uh, righty. Uh, nope, that's the wrong article. Finish that one up. Okay. Mega Evolutions. Uh, I'm now looking at another G2G Media and Legends infographic here. Mega Evolution has made its way to the world of Pokemon Go. Um, we had to wait a little while for this one. Um, avatar items. Mega bracelet avatar item is available now. It's f- free. Go go it's get that free? if you want. I uh, thought it was 100 coins. Is it? I Someone on Twitter said that it was free or something. Oh, um, I, it's in the shop for 100. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Then I, <laughs> I lied. Why would they give you it for free? <laughs> I, they've done it in the past. They've given free stuff in the past, so uh, I don't know. I don't. I, I'm just being silly. Nah. Um, special research, a mega discovery. Join Professor Willow as he learns about mega evolution. Plus, if you complete the special research, you'll uh, be able to help Beedrill mega evolve by receiving Beedrill mega energy. So really quick on that. Uh-huh. That's really nice that they did this, especially when we just recently had Weedle Community Day. Yes. So there shouldn't be a person that says, I can't get a mega Pokemon. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, all right. Mega evolution themed event coming in September. So September 1st through the 7th for one week, uh, mega raids. Your goal will be to complete as many mega raids as you can gather mega energy to mega evolve your Pokemon. I'm going to be saying mega a lot. Hopefully, I believe Eric was working on a drinking game. Hopefully anytime I say mega, it's not take a shot. Please don't, um, (laughs) take a drink of water, hydrate, hydrate kids. Um, September 11th through 17th, Mega Battles. Hone your battle skills with your Mega Evolved Pokemon. Take part in gym battles, Team Go Rocket battles, and trainer battles. Excluding Go Battle League battles, do battles. Which is interesting. Um, but also understandable. We'll talk about that here as well. Um, we'll talk about how Megas work in conjunction with other stuff. Uh, Mega Friendship, September 22nd through 28th. Become buddies with your Mega Evolved Pokemon and spend time with it. That's it. Just so I wonder if that stuff. week is going to be like double uh, friendship bonus for your Pokemon. Uh, that would be cool. That would be cool. Um, all right. I mean, they're very vague on it, but I yeah. feel like that's what that will be. On to Pokemon Go Live's blog post on Mega Evolution. Mega Evolution is here. Battles and raids against Mega Venusaur, Mega Charizard, Mega Blastoise, and more. Um, I'm not going to read this entire thing because it's a whole lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> and if you're anybody that's been paying attention to Megas, we're pretty sure you've read this. Um, all right. So like everyone this morning, I think, was scouring this, looking for any information they could get. Yeah. So what we know so far about Mega Evolution and Pokemon Go. 
This is from the blog post. Select Pokemon can Mega Evolve using a newly discovered resource called Mega Energy. You can collect this mysterious substance by completing Mega Raids. <laughs> Check <it like> that. <laughs> you can collect this mysterious substance by completing Mega Raids, which are raid battles that feature Mega Evolved Pokemon. It seems the faster you defeat a raid boss, the more Mega Energy you'll receive for that Pokemon. You can Mega Evolve any of your Venusaur, Charizard, Blastoise, and Beedrill once you have enough of their corresponding Mega Energy. Uh, I said that like it was almost a question or that sentence continues. It does not. There's a, there's an apostrophe there, um, or an exclamation point. Um, some of these Pokemon are appearing in Mega Raids 2. After you've Mega Evolved a Pokemon, the Mega Energy required to Mega Evolve that specific Pokemon will decrease from then onward. Please note that the Shadow and Clone Pokemon cannot be Mega Evolved. Not really surprised there. Uh, Clone Pokemon kind of, because there's no stat change to Clone Pokemon. Um, but I guess like lore wise, maybe, I don't know. Um, keep in mind that you only can only have one mega evolved Pokemon at a time. If you mega evolve another Pokemon, it appears that the first mega evolved Pokemon will revert back to its original form to help keep, uh, to help you keep track of all of the Pokemon that can mega evolve and the ones that you've successfully mega evolved. You can check out the all new mega Pokedex. Check it out in your Pokedex. Uh, goodness, this chat. <laughs> um, I lost a viewer because of that. What have you done? What have you done, Everybody Jesse? just leaves. Did you, did, uh, okay, as much as I enjoyed Digimon as a, uh, as a kid, no. Um, but no. Uh, explore with your Mega Evolved Pokemon. Um... So, uh, one mega... thing I think we should kind of highlight here with the me the mega evolutions uh -huh. is it is a time thing. Yes, I think they have officially said it is four hours. So if you're going to do something with your mega Pokemon, make it something where you make the most of it. Like if you're going to be doing a bunch of raids that Raid day, hour. if you if it's a rocket takeover, yep, those are great opportunities to use that. Yeah. Um. So mechanic wise, the with the time frame, it's similar to a buddy walking around with you on uh um in the game world as far as it's a timed thing, it goes away after a while. Um I'm pretty sure the buddy time frame is like what, maybe an hour two or two? Hours. Yeah. Um so Mega's being four hours is significantly longer. Um Let's see. Uh, Mega Bracelet Avatar Item. We already talked about that. Mega th Evolution Theme Special Research available. Talked about that. Themed event coming in September. We talked about that. Um, okay. So, stuff Jesse. Stuff they don't tell you. <laughs> yes. Stuff you they don't tell you. Jesse, here, I'm going to ask, ask you a question because okay. there's two of us here. Why don't I ask you a question? Um, it's called Mega Evolution. What? What does it look like when you evolve to a mega evolution, both stat wise and CP wise? So stat wise, it's dependent on the Pokemon. Because if you take something, for example, like Mega Charizard, Mega Charizard has two forms, X and Y. When Mega Charizard evolves into Y, it keeps its same typing, but its attack power goes through the roof. It essentially becomes the strongest Pokemon currently in Pokemon Go. When it is even not at your best buddy, it comes out, I think, to a CP of around 4,500, which I think is above slacking, if I remember correctly. And Sounds if you right. evolve it into Charizard X, it changes its typing to not just Fire, but also Dragon. So Charizard is one of those unique ones where it has two Megas, but currently, from what we have available, we have Mega Venusaur, which just gets a little bit stronger. Mega Charizard, which gets stronger, respectively, if you wanted to change its type. Or if you just want to become stronger overall with Charizard Y. And then Mega Blastoise, which I haven't poured over the stats too much, but I think it just gets more attack power now. Uh, Mega Beedrill is another one that you can get from the research. I haven't seen it in raids, 
And we also were teased Mega Pidgeot, but I haven't seen anything on that as well. Maybe the flying event? Maybe. Um, currently, those are the only Megas we have available. It would seem that my fear personally is that this is like the rocket event where when it first comes out, you had Shadow, Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle. And then after a while, those go away. I don't know if Niantic has plans to make it so that those stay relevant even after they start rotating into different ones. Maybe we see something introduced like Mega Rare Candy, where it's something you can use on any Pokemon for towards their, their Mega Evolutions. Because here's the math. The first Mega Evolution cost, what, 200 for the starters? Don't, and then subsequently it's don't 50. Ask me. Okay. Uh, chat can correct me if I'm wrong. On average, when you do a Mega Raid for Mega Candy, you get 40. But that's based on the average, I think, for time completion now that we're incorporating how fast you can beat the raids and get bonus candy, Mega Candy. So even if you did one raid, you don't get enough to Mega Evolve one Pokemon that you've already Mega Evolved. I'm going to pull up a tweet from Trainer Tips that more or less kind of explains everything. And he didn't even finish the tweet. It was actually kind of funny. Are you going to send a link to me? I'm going to post it here and then I'll read it. One second. I'm trying to find it. Link. Mean or median? Uh, numbers, stats, things. Um, <laughs> actually, if if somebody could get the what's the maximum amount of energy <laughs> mode? <laughs> um, so what's the maximum amount of mega energy you can get from a raid? Uh, and what's the minimum? I mean, I guess the minimum is zero if you don't complete the raid. All right, I'm gonna Te post this in chat. Technically. And I'm also going to read it from Trainer Tips. Max from one raid is 50. Okay, max from one raid is 50. Okay. Okay. The maximum amount. Okay. Do Mega Raids for Mega Energy so you can Mega Evolve for more damage. So you can do more Mega Raids faster for more Mega Energy. So you can Mega Evolve again for more damage so you can Mega Raid faster for more energy, so you can Mega Evolve again for more damage, so you can Mega Raid faster. Yes. Does that sound about right? Yes. <laughs> um, I When I was scrolling through earlier, um, oh, by the way, I don't know who liked this. Uh, KDA released a new song. It is pretty good, so go listen to KDA. I'm not a fan. Okay. But if, if any listeners are interested in KDA, go Listen to KDA. Uh, all right. What but I kind of agree with what Nick is saying. It is going to be, unless we see other methods of them being able to obtain this mega candy for specific Pokemon, it's going to. <laughs> There's an exhibit meme in there. There's <laughs> yes, a lot there of is. stuff in here. Give me a second. But I don't know. It's I. I like Mega Evolutions. I think it's a very unique and game changing mechanic. I just. I hope it changes in the future. I'll just say that. It's an interesting mechanic. It's going to be really fun to see. Uh, coordinate with your raid groups so you don't have three or four people running a Mega Pokemon per raid group because you just need one to get the damage bonus. All right. Um, Alpha Doll. This was the tweet I saw earlier. Okay. So if I just decided to not do any more Mega Raids, what am I missing out on? What does having a reliable Mega Charizard X unlock for me? Um, that was his initial tweet. Uh, he responds with, uh, to it. Uh, I do think we need a reliable source of Mega Candy that isn't generated via rating, but there's certainly time uh, for that. Certainly time for that time be implemented. Uh, that's a little weird. Um, certainly time for that to be implemented before Megas say hit GBL. So question if gbl can be a resource for um mega Obtaining energy more later candy and yeah. stuff. more more mega energy um 
So I don't know if you answered the question because I was I was basically setting up a baseball on a t-ball stand for you here. Um, Mega evolution because of the stat changes is an evolution and it does change the CP of a Pokemon. Correct. I haven't looked enough into it to think. I don't know you, if it changes. You sent you sent me the screenshot. I know, but I've seen people that have mega evolved something and it's been staying under fourteen ninety eight CP. Uh, where did you send me that? You send it to me via Discord. Probably. Yes. Um. Okay. So okay, mega evolve. I can't say yes or no to one thing. Mega evolution lasts for uh for four hours. So yep. this was a twenty eight eighty nine Charizard. Uh, Charizard X went from twenty eight eighty nine to thirty eight fifty. Charizard okay. Y went from twenty eight eighty nine to forty four fifty five. So okay. my my question then becomes: We need if you're looking at Mega's um, I, I right off the bat, I do not expect Silphorina to allow Megas within the tournaments, especially not right now, especially not next month. Potentially in all of season three when it comes around in October. Um, the reason for that is we have to look for community day starters amongst uh, and, and uh, community day Gengar. Uh, we have to look for a Lucario that's beneath 1500, uh, a handful of other Pokemon that are been already beneath 1500 that potentially have their community day moves that can then mega evolve to the 1500 CP limit. And that also goes with Ultra League. You have to find something that is has a community move that is under Ultra League anyway, that when mega will still be under Ultra League. Yeah, it'll be a whole new category to find. So this then becomes a very interesting this becomes a very interesting proposition as far as um, one stats are concerned. So for the most part, great league, anything that was going to be under great league, you're already still looking for the rough zero 15, 15 stats. If you're going as hardcore into stats and looking for that rank one PVP, there are, there are people out there like myself included that don't necessarily need to have the greatest PVP Pokemon. But if you're looking for optimal stats, for PvP within Great and Ultra League, you're usually looking for a low attack, high stamina, um, high defense. So then, the as as I just said, the problem lies. You are looking for something that is already sub Great League, as far as level and CP values, to then mm-hmm. mega evolve. The benefit is, uh, un, I mean, unless you're looking at a remote tournament that happens over the course of a month, most in person and like weekend tournaments happen within a few hours you can mega evolve and and have the tournament be done within those four hours so realistically within within the content or within the confines of the four hours of a mega evolution you can get a tournament done within a non-covert world i should say um Mm -hmm. or having a flash tournament or something um i am about and then there's also going to be that you know we need to get these rounds done within a certain time because (laughs) people are making yeah yeah, there might be added pressure, or you're then required to have more mega energy so that when your mega goes away, in between rounds, you can mega again, or you That's can mega evolve again. It is te- that that does sound tedious. So uh, my from looking at it, because that was one of the 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 questions I had very early on was if megas are sh- are showing up, is it a permanent evolution? Does it just stay in a mega? And with the fact that it's not going to. Um, add some extra doubt on um, um, it being valid within or being allowed within Self Arena. So, uh, Eric in the chat Here saying yeah. optimal yeah. IVs Mega Charizard Y in Great League is a zero ten fourteen at level fifteen. So, see people already finding that information out. Yeah, but that is incredibly low. So, like, what's the what's a Great League Charizard? level wise without megas i think it's 17 so not all 17 that or 18. no most of those third tiers that get pretty high in the late game are pretty low already 19.5 eric saying okay. 19.5 so that's okay. that is a that is a significant level difference 
almost five. Yeah. Um, I mean, and imagine uh, it's going to be different amongst different Pokemon as well. I guess the mm-hmm. the one benefit is stuff like um, Sableye and uh, things that cap out beneath Great League already might be interesting inclusions. So um, Sableye and uh, Metacham. Metacham are, I think, the two examples that come to my mind right off the bat of these two. I don't want to say that their Megas will be allowed compare so like other megas won't be allowed and these two will but those are two arguments that potentially could be because they already cap out underneath 1500 um your stats your your uh, required stats will be a little bit more flexible as far Mm -hmm. as what you're looking for for a great league mega evolution um i think the other question is the both sableye and metacham can perform incredibly well as is Mm-hmm. What is the stat difference between their regular forms and their mega forms do for them in general metas? Yeah. Um, who was it? Somebody put out a stat, a potential stat block of, was it Primal Rayquaza or somebody and uh, within Master League and was like, look at all of these things that it beats. And there was like one thing that it beat, or one thing that beat it, and that was it. Um mm-hmm. Uh, I believe that was on probably Twitter because that's the one that I look for. Um, oh, good heavens. That is a major announcement. Why wow, we'll talk about here that here shortly. Um, uh, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? You now have that in my head. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, and I assume it's in everyone else's head too. So, you know. That's Enjoy. a thing that happened today. Um, I don't remember who it was that posted it, but there is supposedly a mega. It might have been like Kyogre or something that has like absolute beefy monster stats. Um, was it Mewtwo? That's probably it. Um, Hundo Mega Meta Champ caps out at twenty four ninety five. Nice. <laughs> Finally, he can be useful in other leagues. So yeah, like Hundo uh, Hundo Metacham is within Great League, and then you can use it within Ultra <laughs> and GBL if at whatever point in time they allow it. So um, it might have been. It, it was probably Mega Mewtwo has absolute insane stats. Um, that there is literally one thing that beats it within like the top rank of Master League, and that's it. Um, probably Mega Tyranitar. Uh, I no. It was looking at things that exist now, so not megas. Uh, yeah. Um, which is going to be a very difficult. I guess that's another question. Do we think megas will be allowed within Go Battle League? Not right away. Well, I mean, for I sure, not right away. Wait, so. Yeah. Do you think you think that once they've released more megas, do you think they'll be they'll allow it? What's yeah. your okay. Because I, I almost feel like because it's a blind set of three, you only have three Pokemon, I almost feel like it's a little bit too, especially within Master League. I Again, I've yet to see, I'll have to run some tests and see what other people are saying as far as within Great and Ultra League um, and see what those stat, how that level, it being a lower level, but also having higher stats affect it I mean, within... Um, Within Great and Ultra League, within Master League, I think in some cases it can be absolutely broken. So but there are things in Master League where we need these counters and they just don't get that high. Yeah, but I don't think they'll ever be uh, selective into saying uh, Mega Rayquaza just can't happen because it would perform too well or Mega Mewtwo is, is not allowed, but Mega Beedrill is or something. Um, yeah. I think um, because like with only having one mega per uh, one thing mega at a time um, really limits your team comp when it comes to if it if it is allowed within GBL and let's just say for Master League um, having it be allowed within Master League and let's say I have a mega Blastoise but all I'm seeing is mega Venusaur and the only thing that's going to counter it um, you know, power wise is uh Mega Charizard. I have to then spend more Mega energy to get 
Charizard yeah, and, and waste then, whatever then I had for Blastoise. Through. And then it could change again. So I'm going to grab a drink real quick. Okay. Um, I'm going to go into some... I'm going to read a couple questions that our community said or told us uh, from the our Discord. Uh, reminder that our Discord is open to all. Uh, there's a link if you're on Twitch down below. So go ahead and click that link and go to our Discord if you want to hang out. Uh, talk about some interesting questions or if you want to be like what I usually do and just be a lurker and read people's uh, interesting takes and um, you don't have to interact. Um, uh, or if you're listening on podcast services, it is in the description. There is a link to the Discord uh, there in that description. So these questions actually are all from Eric. Um, dang, Eric, putting in work both before and during the podcast. Um, Eric BN 262 how is Niantic going to do Mega Kangaskhan because it's a regional um, I'm going to cover this one and maybe Jesse will be able to pop in uh, before I finish up um, if Mega Pokemon are if the eligible Megas are showing up in raids so right now we have uh, Charizard, Venusaur, Blastoise and um, Beedrill um, when Mega Kangaskhan comes out I imagine Mega Kangaskhan and then uh, there was oh crap! There was one other uh, Heracross. Heracross as well has a Mega and is also a regional. I imagine those two are going to show up in raids globally. Um, they have been uh, regional since the very beginning. I imagine that those are going to come out um, globally within raids, within Mega raids, um, and be available to all. Because I. I would not understand why they would still continue to make that original, huh? Said I see a Mega Kangaskhan. Yeah, so we're going. I'm I'm going over Eric's uh, question on how is Niantic going to do Mega Kangaskhan because it's a regional, um, and then in the same boat, um, Heracross as well. I think they're going to be allowed globally. Those raids are when it becomes eligible to Mega, they are going to pop up in Mega raids globally. Everyone's going to have access to them because I just does not make sense to me to continue to make those uh, regional. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. But to uh, from what I can... My belief. My belief is that they will show up globally. Did you post that link somewhere? Which one? The one you're looking at? Uh, no. This is just the list of... Uh, Megas? Yeah. Here. Okay. Have it in Discord. Um, okay. no worries, Eric. That's why I double checked to see if there was anything else in here that was uh interesting or uh exclusive. regional. Yeah, anything else that would be that would be exclusive. Um, the interesting thing on top of this is Diancy later on, which is also a legendary. Um, so that should be that's not regional, but should be an interesting one. Is Diancy a mythic? Yeah. And that kind of goes into the same question as huh. all of these mythic and legendary megas. How are we going to get the can candy once their raids are gone? Right. How are we going to get that mega energy? Unless they make a generic mega energy that maybe it requires yep. more of this generic mega energy to mega evolve, but this particular generic mega energy is available at all times. Yeah. Maybe. Is it just me or these mega stones look like marbles? That's kind of the point. Neat. I didn't play X or Y or with, I've seen people with collections on their shelving like of these orbs, but they're the size of like, let's say a regular, like your Pokeball plus, uh -huh. but like glass marble versions of these on like stands and stuff. Interesting. I didn't play X or Y or alpha Sapphire Omega Ruby. So, um, or Omega. Yeah, no, I got it right. Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? Metric is the worst looking one. Right? Metric, it just, it uh... goes super saiyan. Let me look at it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Quadruped Super Saiyan. That is a weird one. Um, Eric's second question here that relates to Megas. We had a bunch of interesting questions, by the way. Um, everyone that submitted questions, honestly, I don't think there was a single question that I wouldn't want to answer on the podcast. Uh, I just grabbed the ones that were related to Mega enter uh, or Mega Evolutions. Um, in the next couple episodes, we'll cover some more um submitted questions from the discord um but eric's second question here is 
Uh, quote, I also heard an interesting theory from Adam on the last Lured Up podcast episode that the Pokemon company could allow Go to come out with their own mega forms, specifically Melmetal. Thoughts on new megas you'd like to see? Um, oh, boy. Chatting with uh, Jesse earlier. What was your thought again, Jesse? You don't want to speculate? I, I don't like to speculate because I don't like to be disappointed. That is valid. Um, I think Melmetal makes sense considering Melmetal uh, is new. Melmetal is new and it's the Pokemon Go exclusive, basically. It also gives them a reason to throw out the shiny again. That is actually a great point, And I did not think of that. That is a fantastic idea. Um, I don't think it'll be a raid boss, though. I'd be hard pressed. <laughs> To see uh, Mill Metal as a raid boss. That's true. Maybe as a raid boss, but you can't catch it. You get a Meltan instead. <laughs> Potentially. Or you get the or you get the Meltan box. Slap in the face. Or you get a Meltan box. Okay. That I could see. Yeah. That would make sense. Because yeah, it would not make sense because it has a four hundred I mean, uh, have we had Altaria or No, we've had Gyarados, Gyarados. in raids. Mm-hmm. We've had both of those in raids. So I maybe um, but it would make sense if it just gave you a, a Meltan box, box or something. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, I've had a box for months and I still haven't opened it. Um, you haven't had a reason to. <laughs> true. Shame on me though. Um, there's no reason I can't be collecting more candy. Um, Other than that, I mean, like you said earlier, having the evolutions have a mega would be interesting. Or Raichu have an EV, uh, a, a mega evolution as well. It like the the some of the like mascot Pokemon, the fact that they're not. Like Mewtwo and Charizard are like the two marquee Pokemon on this list that have Megas. Um, beyond that, uh, nothing really stands out to my knowledge. Um, as I scroll through the list and double check, um, maybe <laughs> Mega Lucario, but I, eh. um, as far as like marquee prom- promotional in um, promotional art, I mean, all they over. They can start doing some for Galarian, but at that point, I think. The people in the Sword and Shield games would be like, "Well, this needs to be in the game." Then, that's true. That is true. That would be an in- that would be an interesting. That would set an interesting precedent. Um, I mean, because we do have the. I always forget is Gigantamax the one that's better, or is it Dynamax? Dynamax is the regular. Yes, Gigantamax then, is the. Gigantamax is more or less the mega, if you will, for that gen. I think right. Which is another something I think I talked about at the beginning of the. Did I talk about it this at the during the podcast mm-hmm. or before? Yeah, um, the beginning. Yeah, I would not be surprised to see Z moves function within the game as some sort of special TM or something, um, considering we have uh, elite TMs. More or less, I would not be surprised if there was some sort of Z move TM, um, or Z move giving item, um, and then. Um, Dynamax Pokemon, I would not be surprised if we saw using, oh goodness, like the exact same mechanics as Megas, honestly. Um, Although it would be very interesting that m- maybe not all PvP battles allowed for Dynamaxing or something. I don't know. Because mm-hmm. like Dynamaxing is tied to particular locations with the the beams of light and the, the dens. So I don't know. It, it could honestly use the same mechanics, but sort of the like lore specifics wise would have to be sort of bent. So, or adjusted, which I think they are still here with Megas, but having not played that generation of games, I don't know all of the the specifics as far as Mega Evolutions lore wise. So, um, I'm not a lore master. <sighs> all right, Jesse, do you have any final conclusion information stuff on Megas? Last thoughts before we move on? Don't go out and spend all your money on it. Maybe just burn your free ones for right now. Yeah. Uh, do invite your friends, though. Try to organize with people. Join your local community or your discords. We, we try to put raids on for our group when we can. Um, for me personally, I'm not going to go out of my way to burn uh, remote passes for these. Uh-huh. I'll definitely be using my free passes. Right. Again, if you want to join us in our raids on our Discord, link is below. Um, don't limit who you invite to these. 
because the more people you can get, the faster you can get these done and the more energy you can get. Right. And be kind to your community. Let them know which counters to use. Don't have them just go in with Dragonites because Charizard isn't effective against Dragonite if it doesn't have a dragon move. Yeah, try and try and educate the community the 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 parts of your community that don't have quite as much uh, game knowledge. Um, like I had somebody ask me today, is Tyranitar a good thing against Charizard? And I was like, well, uh, yeah, it's rock. Yeah, and it resists everything it does. But again, that comes down to depending on what moves it has. Right. Just because it resists it doesn't mean it's going to be super effective. Right. You kind of want a good mix of both if you can. Yeah. And the suggested six Pokemon for raids in uh, that Pokemon Go suggests to you aren't always the quite the best. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And spreading that knowledge is actually super important for both. I mean, it's important for raids and then super important for uh, Go Battle League and PvP stuff. So. Um, and it benefits everyone for getting these raids done faster. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I have not done, uh, any of these raids. I know arrow actually sent me a couple of invites, but I don't have any remote passes. So, um, can I get any remote passes for free? Nope. Okay. Unless it's in the daily free box and it's not, um, I'll have to go out <laughs> and get these at some point or maybe not care. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm really torn as far as to if these make sense. Um, I think it's a little bit limiting as far as uh, it's slightly limiting for content creators, especially GBL focused content creators, um, as far as uh, getting these and testing them. And like, you'll have to. I guess it's all, let me let me take that back. It's not at all limiting, realistically. Um, it just means that they're just going to have to do standard sent invite battles rather than just doing gbl to test these things out um and yeah i can't imagine that sylph arena unless it's like really uh a a really eligible i don't know i I don't have the stats in front of me i can't imagine these are going to be eligible but i've been proven wrong and been wrong before so um yeah those are my thoughts (laughs) tons of energy or tons of info tons of times i've said mega hopefully you're hydrating uh and hydrating with water uh and not with alcohol Um, or you do (laughs) or or hydrate with both maybe nani uh all right last topic yes i think so i think it's the last topic our meta analysis because uh gbl is about the same Master League wise, as it was before, I don't think anything's changed, uh, both in Premier and in Open Master League. Um, and Sylph Arena is going away for season two. Oh, wait. Um, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Well, sort of. Uh, August 24th, 2020, sylph.gg forward slash updates forward slash players dash choice dash 2020. You decide the meta for September. Get ready for the arena's first Players' Choice Cup. Through two exciting PvP seasons, the arena met... Oh, God, wow. Let me re- restart okay? that. Let me restart you- start that. I got, like, too much saliva in my mouth, and then I almost choked on it. It was weird. Um, like that. Uh, podcasting sometimes be like that. Uh, Through two exciting PvP seasons, the Arena meta team has created and released over 20 different PvP metas. We've seen all sorts of interesting themes, including some based on Pokemon types, like the Twilight and Forest Cups, Generation Restrictions in the Rainbow and Forest Cups, and Species Whitelist with the Ferocious Cup and more. Now it's time for you to put on meta creation skills to the test. (laughs) Thanks thanks for the vote of confidence, Eric. I have been (laughs) hydrating with water. (laughs) <laughs> this September the arena is asking you the community yes you to submit your best meta idea for the first ever Silph Arena Players Choice Cup the top meta submitted will be the official cup during the arena off season here's what you need to know Players Choice Cup guidelines so the Players Choice Cup members of the uh, in the Players Choice Cup members of the community can submit custom metas for the chance to have it selected as September's 2020 official cup theme The Arena Meta team will review all submissions and narrow them down to the top choices. Then, we need you to vote on your favorite. 
The meta with the most votes will be made available as an unra unranked, unranked tournament on Silph.gg during the PvP offseason. So the PvP offseason will be a single month, according to this. Um, sort of reading between the lines here. Uh, this is an unranked, unrequired Silph meta during the offseason of September. There are a few guidelines uh, that all submitted metas will need to follow. Meta parameters must abide by the standard tools available. Types, legendaries, mythicals, individual species, moveset costs, generation, or shadows may be allowed or banned. Uh, metas based on web tools are not allowed. This includes drafts, specific move bans, point systems, or any format that would require tools outside of the current self.gg team selection screen. So anything that's super complicated, um, Silph Arena is saying no. Doesn't mean you can't run it yourself in your own Discord or your own community. Uh, it just can't be eligible for the player's choice uh, meta. Uh, let's see. Submission requirements, a bunch of stuff. Uh, what? Tell us. You have to tell them what's allowed, what's banned. You have to tell them the name slash theme of the cup. Uh, contributors, submit up to two people in addition to yourself uh, to credit with the creation of your meta. Uh, a brief explanation of your theme. Each meta usually has one of these. So if you read the little like eight and a half by 11 description thing that they send out, um, you can check that. Uh, PV Poke custom rankings code. You will need to input your meta into PV Poke's custom rankings tool and submit the meta code. Um, I assume that's just to make sure that your meta isn't completely wonky and unbalanced. Um, you want to make sure that your like top 20 to 30 are all Pokemon that are reasonably eligible. Um, mm -hmm. or else you'll might make something that's similar to Ferocious Cup where everyone was running the same eight Pokemon. So I don't know. I have so many gripes about that, even though I didn't participate of like outside looking <laughs> in. And a lot of people said it was one of their favorite metas. I assume that's just because everyone was running the same thing. So their overall team comps weren't changing a whole lot it was particularly skill based which i don't know i just want something that's a little bit fresher and allows for a little bit more spice yeah. um maybe it did somebody tell me what was jim corn running in ferocious maybe that'll that'll tell me some stuff um <laughs> submissions are open from august 24th until september 4th at 11 59 p.m utc that's a time zone i don't know the name of um universal time potentially i don't know the arena meta team will then take a few days to review the submissions and pick the top metas creative creativity balance originality and species diversity will all be taken into uh, under consideration taken <clears throat> under consideration and uh taken into consideration huh. yes agreed uh by the team on september 8th we'll reveal the finalists you will have from september 8th to the 11th to vote on your favorite uh, the top choice will be available starting September 12th. The cup will be available as an unranked tournament through the end of September and then added as a retro cup. The creators of the selected medal will receive a special achievement badge on their trainer cards. That's kind of neat. I'm um, always about that. Uh, there have been many amazing unofficial metas created over the past seasons, and we can't wait to see what unique and creative themes you come up with. It's time to put your thinking caps on, fire up your spreadsheets, and get creating. Um, so this is kind of interesting. Um, as yeah, I was joking with one of our friends about this when they first announced this, I'm gonna read what I said. Give me a second, but go ahead and continue. Um, as I was kind of alluding to at the beginning of this segment, um, I kind of want a month off. Um, I can understand Self Arena wanting to continue to generate interest within um the context of its competitive scene. Um, GBL and Self Arena most certainly have. Um, there's a Venn diagram of battlers, um, that is almost a complete circle that participated within both. Um, but there are plenty of people, um, that I, I assume in this instance, they don't want to give an excuse for people to leave self arena and never come back to self arena. Um, mm -hmm. as far as a uh, competitive scene, GBL has done a fairly good job at being, um, competitive and engaging within, uh, the um Pokemon Go's battling mechanics. So um they've also done their best to you know work with everyone even during the pandemic. I'm sure you know a lot of people miss being able to go to their local community and hang out I know in I a do. local Starbucks or another building of that kind of nature yeah. and play with each other for a period of two to three hours. 
but now we've been kind of put into a position where we have to play over periods of time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this is an interesting concept. I'll be very interested to see what the finalists are. Um, I, I, I just not going to put forth the, the energy. I've had enough stuff going on outside of and uh, within battle science to put together a meta. Jesse, I know you were throwing out a couple of ideas. I don't know how serious you would be about um, submitting those. Oh, I've already um, submitted my idea. Oh, you have? Well, yeah. we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I, uh, I'll be... idea. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put much thought into it. I was like, boom, boom, boom. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, uh, the conversation I kind of wanted to get back to what I was looking for was mm -hmm. I mentioned to my friend the create a cup theme and they said that that's bold. It looks like self is looking for new ideas for season three. And I commented back or they got tired of people complaining about their cups. Say that again. Sorry. So they said that I shared the picture of make your own cup uh -huh. and they said, that's bold. Looks like self is looking for new ideas for season three. And I responded or they got tired of people complaining about the cups they make. Maybe I, I, they might use some inspiration, but I'm sure they're still working within their own confines. Um, so, we were throwing ideas back and forth both in our chat and with my friends. One concept I thought of was open battle league, open great league, but you can only use one type of Pokemon. So the gym leader challenge more or less. So a mono type. Yep. Okay. So you can only run if you're running. So say if you, you select run water, water, you can only run water. And then depending on what your opponent has, most of these types have something else in conjunction. Uh -huh. So you can play around with your typings. But at the same time, it makes it completely random what you're going to come up against. I, unless both of you have water. Right. I That would be interesting. I don't think it would be consistent. Um, I assume a lot of people would be running water because we've seen and we've talked yeah. about the diversity. I mean, obviously, certain types might have to be banned. Or certain combination of types might have to be banned. Uh, dragon. <laughs> um, just off the bat, I'd probably say dragon. Um, because unless you're running a... Is, is there a water ice? Is there something that if you're running a dragon team, is there something? Are, are there enough of that Lapras, type? Lapras, Helio. Uh, That's true. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Another concept I'm kicking around. Um, I want to do just a pure fighting monotype fighting cup. The karate cup? More or less. But or the, um, there's so many things that have... The tournament arc Pokemon. of Pokemon Go PvP? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dugong. Dugong's another one. Oh, yeah, as a water ice. That's true. Yep. I, we don't think about it because we don't have the legacy. <laughs> yeah, the double legacy Dugong is a monster. Um. But I encourage the community, if you're someone that's creative and you want to, you know, if you've had a cool idea for a concept of a cup, throw it out, there, throw it into PV Poke, mm -hmm. run some Sims, see how the numbers play out, see if the top 10 things are going to be the things that everybody picks every time. See that if someone that's maybe not as high a level or doesn't have access to community and Pokemon is still going to have a chance to beat the top competitors mm -hmm. i mean that's one of the things that you really kind of have to look at is consistency and balance when it comes to picks in your tournament so i would say look in another thing the submission that i did is very rock paper scissors and my friend pointed out to me that that's not a very popular mechanic because it comes down to did you pick the right option yeah but I mean, you can only do so much. Um, because hmm. certain Pokemon will just always perform well, and like a bunch of the simulations I've been running, Stunfisk is just relevant no matter where you put it. If it's allowed, it's going to be at the top. Is that regular Stunfisk or Galarian Stunfisk? Both. Okay. Yeah. Like I tried doing a. I'll throw this concept out there because it's too unbalanced of a cup. I was thinking the factory cup or something like an assembly line cup where it's steel, fire, and electric. Uh -huh. But maybe something else in there to kind of balance it out. But 
Stunfisk being optional is just ruins everything. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like you're going to want something to uh, steal fire electric. You're going to want something to beat out fire. Uh, maybe fire Which and electric. So maybe water you, th- in there. you could throw rock in. Yeah, because then steel beats rock, and but the problem is most rock are also ground, which, which beats would then a, beat the rest of them. Well, it beats electric. That that's true. It beats electric, or then you can then say, yeah, yeah, because there's not a whole lot of there's, there's not a whole lot extra, of mono rock. You can't. There's then all this extra stuff ground. you have to incorporate. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's interesting. Um. That all you got? Yeah, that's okay. pretty much it. Um, there is a big event happening this weekend that I kind of forgot to mention in the news roundup. Um, Uh the Sylph Arena 2020 World Championships are happening this Saturday, August 29th at noon, noon Eastern, uh, noon Eastern. 9 a.m. for us. Um, oh man, I'm going to have to get up for that. Um, I feel like there was something else going on, um, that I had to get up for. Um, I did not double check what all the rules are. I believe the rules are a, I believe it's a round robin. Um, and they did a draft with a band phase, but I believe they've already done that and they haven't, if they live streamed it, I missed it. I, I'm a little perturbed about that, but, um, they're already showing off the, um, uh, they're already showing off the teams and each of the competitors. Um, but this was tweeted, Less than an hour ago, let me put this on stream. Uh, just when you thought oh. the stakes couldn't get any higher, the, in, a, in addition to the Arena Season 2 champion title, the four Continental Champs will battle it out for their share of a $4,000 cash pot. Be sure to tune in on, uh, to twitch.tv slash Arena on August 29th at 4 p.m. UTC to catch the action. So wow. uh, Latin American champion Ventuski. Um, Asia Pacific champion, uh, Maron, Maron P32, I believe is correct. I'm probably butchered it again. Uh, Speediest Chief 2, North American champion, and Memphis, uh, Memphis Flomed, uh, European championship, uh, or European champion, uh, all up for the prize pool of four, or the pool of 4,000. So first place gets $2,000, second place gets $1,000, third and fourth place each get $500. Uh, which is still nothing to sneeze at for it's not the first time we've seen a uh, a cash prize for a Pokemon Go tournament um but it is the first time we've seen it for Sylph Arena this being season 2 um this is impressive this is absolutely crazy impressive so um yeah if you weren't con- if you weren't thinking about watching it before probably think about watching it now so um, I think that's it. I think we've covered everything. We've probably forgotten yep. something. Probably. Uh, <laughs> let us know what you what uh what we forgot. We will try to cover it in the next episode, um, of Battle Science in two weeks. Probably next. Um, I imagine, uh, next episode will actually record it on Tuesday, and it will actually come out on time Friday morning. Um, this episode I'm going to be squeaky clean. Uh, with our uh prime uh, um or not prime uh twitch affiliate yes we're an affiliate not a partner uh our twitch affiliate agreement thing this uh podcast will go up at about eight o'clock p.m pst uh tomorrow so it will have the full 24 hour exclusivity so i apologize for anyone that's lis- that listens to the podcast on the dot friday mornings this is delayed because we waited to record it because we wanted to cover this mega the mega news so uh thank you everybody for tuning in um uh Get join, there, do a couple mega raids yep um join us in the discord if you guys want to uh chat up about the podcast or other fun uh features and stuff um or just have you know lighthearted conversations about stuff i don't know um <laughs> hang out with some people that hang, have like-minded interests yes um or fellow podcast listeners um tweet at us at battle underscore science uh email us at 
um, battlescience.podcast at gmail.com. Um, uh, our DMs are open. Please don't send us hate. Uh, no one has yet, thankfully. Um, I feel like there was some other reference I was going to say, but I do want to thank our community. Our community has been uh, super fantastic. We have not received any like hate. We've gotten some... Um, gotten a little bit of criticism but it's never been harsh or anything um if you guys have any criticism as far as the podcast any ways that we can improve please let us know um yes i am working on the bumpers uh yes we are working on the um emotes for twitch uh yes we are working on the patreon um nothing will change if you do not uh suffice it to say if you do not um if you don't support us on Patreon, you're not missing out on any of the content that we currently do. Um, the Patreon will probably go up here in the next week or two, hopefully. I say that probably knowing that it will be longer just because that's the timeline for literally everything else I do. So, right, Jesse? Yeah. Yeah. I said that the uh, bumpers were going to get done by this week. Um, the two people that I'm trying to get, uh, to do some VO for the bumpers, um, they're getting married in like a week and a half. Uh, and so they're like crazy busy with like general life and then they're going to go get married. So, um, congrats to them. Uh, I don't blame them for being like absolutely like slammed as far as timing. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so, um, and actually Skylar, uh, my buddy that helped us out with the Portland mega tournament. Um, he's the one getting married. So, um, congrats to Skylar and uh, Kelsey. I don't think they listen to the podcast, so um, rude. They'll never hear this. <laughs> I, I don't blame. I mean, I'm not going to try and indoctrinate all of my family and friends into listening to the podcast that they probably don't have any uh, interest in listening to. So, um, that's fair. But I I appreciate everyone that has uh, listened to the podcast, downloaded, shared it. Um, we hit over 10,000 downloads here recently, so... I was actually um, going to ask you the numbers. Wow. Yeah, I think we we surpassed 10,000. Let me pop open uh, while I still am not finishing the episode. Outros. Yeah, outros <laughs> are hard. I feel like um, intro and outro, I need to like write a script so I can just get the Stick intro done it. with and then get the outro done with and just be you know regular. Um, all time Podbean is telling me 10.9 thousand, um, wow. approximately. So that is, that's, Thank you. I feel like that's insane. Um, compared to like some other podcasters that get like thousands of downloads every episode. Um, whereas I think our average is, let me go to our statistics, like, what, downloads. It's two to 300 usually. Yeah. Um, that is, uh, I want as of all time, all episodes. Come on, all time. Uh, three to four hundred. Um, so <laughs> yeah, our one year anniversary podcast got three hundred sixty four downloads. Um, the highest downloads we've ever gotten were January thirty first, the Rose Cup. Uh, we got five hundred seventy nine. Um, and then the second highest one also in the 500s is 549. That was our February, January and February episodes. Um, so, and then 400s or so within there. So, um, thank you everybody who's listening. Thank you everyone that's, uh, referred us to other people. Um, especially shout out to, uh, Mr. Livid, uh, of Texas PVP. Uh, I popped into his stream last night, uh, and he had high, high praise, um, probably higher praise than I would have, uh, ever. I, I it made me uncomfortable actually of like, <laughs> ex- of like sort of accepting that. So honest. yeah, um, I would not expect that. So, um, thank you very, everybody for listening to this episode and to previous episodes and supporting us and what we do. Um, thank you guys for supporting Pokemon go and Pokemon go PVP. Um, because, uh, without the overall community within this game, uh, we would not be doing this. So um, I'm going to stop myself before I get to a point where I'm going to want to cry. Um, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, if you're still with us on Twitch, 
Um, we're going to do probably just a little conversation afterwards and then probably kick it off to somebody else who's streaming because I'm sure there are plenty of other people streaming on Twitch right now. Pokemon Go, there always is. Yep. So um, yep. we'll catch you guys in two weeks. Uh, unless you want to join us for some GBL PvP, uh, I will be live Fridays and every other Tuesdays. At least I try to be, schedule-wise. Uh, we'll catch you guys out there on the battlefield.